A new chapter is emerging in Hong Kong's fight for autonomy against China. China is set to impose new national security legislation for the global financial hub. The new legislation comes in response to last year's often violent protests that put the territory in a state of unrest not seen since it was returned to the Chinese government in 1997. Beijing says the move is designed to improve the connections between China and Hong Kong. The new laws are set to ban any seditious activities aimed at the central government, along with any external influences on the territory. However, critics say the legislation would strip away Hong Kong's right to protest and China's plans to bypass the territory's Legislative Council, or LEGO, and directly insert the legislation into Hong Kong's basic law threatens its overall autonomy. Body collectors carry a victim of COVID-19 down the dusty hills of this working-class neighborhood on the outskirts of Lima. It's dangerous work few Peruvians are willing to do as the coronavirus spreads with alarming speed through the country. Many of those who do dare to take the job or poor Venezuelan migrants now thrust to the front line of the pandemic. On March 16th, Peru became one of the first countries in Latin America to impose a strict lockdown. But now, more than two months later, it's one of the regions worst affected by coronavirus with more than 100,000 cases. Experts say people's behavior is to blame in a country where more than 70% of the population lives hand to mouth. South Africa's Manenberg is notorious for gang violence. Many young people here have joined gangs because of a lack of jobs. And with factories shut down during the COVID-19 lockdown, many more people are out of work. Andy Steele Smith is a preacher who's recruiting gang members to help those in need. Some of the volunteers belong to the Americans and hard livings, two rival gangs who for years have been fighting a tough war in Cape Town. Gang members deliver bread, flour and vegetables to homes and soup kitchens. They work with residents who identify which families need assistance. The gangs also benefit. They get a meal and a chance to uplift their community. The sons of slain journalist Jamal Khashoggi have decided to forgive their father's killers. On Friday, Khashoggi's eldest son, Salah Khashoggi, took to Twitter with a statement on his father's killers. He said that people who forgive and reconcile are rewarded by God, and so pardoned his father's assassins who are currently in a Saudi prison. Khashoggi's gruesome murder at the Saudi consulate in Turkey had created a diplomatic storm in 2018. Many intelligence agencies and even the United Nations believe that the Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman had ordered the assassination. A Saudi probe ultimately concluded that Khashoggi was killed in a rogue operation. Saudi Arabia sentenced five people to death over the murder. The entire probe was criticized heavily by a UN official who called it the antithesis of justice. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation has made another arrest in the case of Ahmad Arbery, a young African-American man who was shot and killed while on a jog earlier this year. The fatal shooting was captured on camera and has generated outrage across the country. Well, if you know, it was that video that changed the whole trajectory of this investigation. As you'll remember, for two months, the case was stagnant, and then that shocking video was released. It was William Roddy Bryan, the man who took that video and he's the man who's now been taken into custody today exactly two weeks from the time that you had Gregory and Travis McMichael that were taken into arrest now the GBI is announcing that Brian has been taken into custody he is charged with felony murder that is the same charge that Travis and Gregory received but also he's been charged with criminal attempt to commit false imprisonment I did wear, I had one on before. I wore one in this back area. 
but I didn't want to give the press the pleasure of seeing it. But no, where I had it in the back area, I did put a uh, mask on. My, here's my mask right here. And I liked it very much. I actually, honestly, I think I look better in the mask. I really did. I look better in the mask. But I'm making a, uh, but I'm making a speech, so I won't have it now. But uh, I did have it on right here, and I think some of you might have gotten a shot. I was given I was given a choice and I had one on in an area where they preferred it so I put it on and it was very nice it looked very nice uh, but they said uh, not necessary here Mexico is now recording its deadliest day yet in the battle against COVID-19. Morticians and frontline workers in Mexico City are overwhelmed. But as our Ian panel reports, there are questions about the true toll of the pandemic. At a funeral home in Mexico City, every possible precautions taken to protect the living as the last rites are given to the dead. Hearses sprayed as body bags are removed, everyone in full PPE. This cemetery used to bury around five people a day. Now it's running at capacity, 24 hours a day, at least 25 bodies. And this is just the latest COVID-19 victim to be entered. And Rodrigo knows. He brings the bodies to the crematorium with his uncle. They used to bury the dead here. Now they're mostly burned. The view from above, drones sweeping across cities in France as part of police efforts, not only to keep an eye on things, but also to get a message across. Rappel des consignes relatives à l'épidémie de Covid-19. Tous les déplacements hors du domicile sont interdits sauf dérogation. The drones had other uses too, alerting the police to any unusual gatherings, perhaps a more efficient way to monitor the streets, or as George Orwell once described it, it was the police patrol snooping. Then began the fight back. Human rights groups had warned of a threat to personal privacy. They took their case to court and they won. For China, money is not a problem. The only question is, where should it, they spend that money? China is spending a lot of money right now, but not on its poor citizens. Chinese cash is going towards acquisitions. They are buying stressed companies the world over. China's latest acquisition is Norwegian Air. It is Norway's largest airline, and now it is partly Chinese. Technically, this is an indirect acquisition. What is that? Let me explain. Norwegian Air was struggling. It was about to run out of cash. The company said that by mid-May, around this time, it may be out of money. What they wanted was a government aid package of $271 million. So where does China come in the picture? China sneaked through the back door. 